Hey, how's it going? Joe Walsh here, Wishes Rock Surf Camp. Nikki Haran down here on the beach in Costa Rica, Tamarindo. Yeah, so we, uh, we showed up this morning. Waves are pretty small. Um, definitely a longboard day. And uh, we had a few people asking us what would be the best board to ride. And that kind of got us thinking that we should probably give an overview video of what board to ride for whatever conditions. And since so many people have so many questions about surfboard types, sizes, what's the best surfboard for you to ride, um, we're going to go through all of them, or a lot of boards. And yeah, so what we did is we pulled out a bunch of boards of our own personal quivers and also uh, from our rental fleet at the Witches Rock Surf Shop. So uh, yeah, I mean, well, today, as you said, it's really small, like actually really pretty small. We, we don't really get these type of conditions, you know what I mean? It's kind of, uh, like you said, a real longboard day. So I think we should just start off with uh, talking about longboards. Exactly. They talk about, they, they say in surfing, it's very important to be able to surf the conditions. So if the waves are big, you need to have a big wave board. And if the waves are small, you need to have a small wave board. A longboard is a great small wave board. So let's start off with Nikki's uh, classic Robert August custom shape. What is this, a 9.6? This is a 9.6, yeah. So with a board this size, okay, so it's very long. It's a 9.6. The whole point is that you got a lot of volume in the board. The more volume you have in the board, the easier it is going to be to paddle, okay? Um, this type of design, it has uh, thicker rails, obviously, and it's a very flat rocker. Okay, this was a classic longboard style, like uh, I suppose from back in the, in those good old days of the 60s, 70s, even before. So uh, as you can see, these types of boards, are usually come with a single fin setup. Okay, so what we have here is a, a very large 11 inch hatchet fin. This is just for pivotal surfing, literally just one direction and going down the line. I use this to do as much nose riding as I possibly can. So this type of board, you're gonna be able, able to take out in conditions perfectly like for today. Okay, this is good from anything from literally knee high to up to, I don't like to ride at anything above waist really because after that the wave starts getting a little bit more critical or bigger and uh, this type of board starts to not perform as well. Okay, so this type of board is really for if you're looking for kind of like an old school kind of um, feel and style and obviously for smaller types of waves. I mean, just because it is a long board, it doesn't mean that you have long boards that aren't made for kind of like higher performance uh, waves and styles. So, you know, these boards are generally nine feet and over and between two and a half to three inches thick. Okay. So, um, so Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> Joe. Um, <clears throat> let's put the board side by side next to this board here. Okay. What Nikki's describing is a classic, what we call a log. It's a classic long board. Uh, probably more in like the three inch plus rail range, let's be honest. Some of these classic long boards are uh, upwards of four inches thick. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and they're really meant for walking to the nose, cross stepping, drawn out turns. Uh, they're meant for smaller waves. You get into some bigger surf, you really don't want to have something so cumbersome. At least uh, I'm not really comfortable with that. No, no. It's a no. lot of board to handle. But if you do like longboarding and you want to surf a little more challenging, steeper conditions, this right here is an example of a 9.0 more high uh, performance longboard. This is made by Firewire, it's a TJ Pro model. Uh, the rails are thinner, it has a little more rocker. Let's go ahead and put this on the, on the stand here, get rid of that board. So this is a more of a progressive longboard. You can see there's a little more rocker in the board. It makes it easier for dropping into a steeper wave. Uh, these classic uh, nose riding logs, they're usually pretty flat. So if you try to drop into a head high plus wave with a flat board, you could dig your nose pretty easy. That's where a, a bit more rocker, especially up in the nose, uh, helps with a longboard, uh, pr with a progressive longboard. And uh, they're just generally lighter weight, easier to whip around. And they usually come with a three fin setup. So not only do you have your center fin, but you've got side bites as well. And that really helps make your turning uh, that much sharper, sharper turns, uh, surfing a little more, um, surfing a, just a little more progressively. Um, if you're learning how to surf though, Nikki, let's grab this torque right here. And just lay it up in front. This looks very similar. Maybe you don't know what you're looking at. Um, this right here, this is like an industrial version of a nine foot longboard. You see a lot of these in surf camps, surf schools, surf shops. Uh, I wouldn't call them lower end because they're not lower end. They're just more indestructible. They're made with epoxy foam, epoxy resin. Uh, they're glass really heavy. They're a little cumbersome, but uh, they're really easy to, um, to stand up on and ride. They don't ding so, so easily. So if you're a learning surfer, 
uh, we definitely recommend starting on a longer board. Why? More volume means more float, means catching more waves. Uh, the more waves you catch, the more chances you have to stand up and learn how to surf. So therefore, starting on a long board, you're going to get a lot more opportunities to stand up and ride waves. But you probably won't start on a log or on a high performance longboard. You're going to want something in the middle. That's where these nine foot uh, workhorses, a torque, a uh, uh, NSP, uh, even just a used longboard, anything in the nine foot range, if you're, uh, I would say, if you're an adult uh, or a larger person in general. If you're maybe a smaller female or a big child or even a mid range child, we have an eight foot and a seven six version of these boards. I'm going to put this down here. So what is this? This is like a fun shape. It's basically a mini longboard. Uh, still has the three fins set up. What makes this different though, Nikki? What makes this different is it has kind of a little bit more of an egg shape. So it's obviously got, I would say it's not as long as the, obviously the 9.0 because it's a 7.6, but it still retains as much volume as it can in the part of the board here. Ooh. We do ding repair too. Yeah, we're lucky. <laughs> So the idea between having a board like this is you get a shorter length board, so it's easier to turn and easier to manage, but you can continue to have the same amount of float in the middle, okay? This is the part where I like to call the float. This is where your chest is gonna be when you're paddling. Also, it's where you, you, when you pop up, that's where your front foot is gonna be in this area. So look for, like if you're looking for a, to move down in size, make sure you get something that has plenty of volume right in the middle here, in this section of the board here, okay? The main difference between this board also, as you can see the tail right here, is drawn right into a rounded pin. This helps with uh, making the board easier to turn because you turn from the back with the fins. If you've got a wider tail or a different type of shape tail, it's going to be a little harder to turn. So this allows someone, like Joe said, like a, a small adult or a, a, you know, a, a larger teenager or something like that, that is going to be able for them to be able to get into small waves like today but have a little bit more option to be a higher performance style on the wave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, these things like they're, they're considered as they're considered sorry, they're considered as eggs, fun boards, mid range, mini mouths. Yeah, th these types of boards are you know these are really good to have because you can ride them from anything from again sort of like Small surf knee to, to waist, and also waves. I would be happy to take this into head head high plus. You could still ride. Yeah, the board. you could still ride it. So when you're first starting out, you've really got to figure out. Um, what you want and with this type of construction aboard most of the dings that happen uh, when you're surfing is when you're not surfing basically because it's when you're maneuvering the board around outside of the beach through your house into your car this type of material is extremely tough pretty durable so what these boards are they're very good value for money because they will last you a long time you will progress off this you know uh, off this type of um, material but um, like you said, it makes it a little heavier with the construction, but still, um, it's a you know they're really really decent boards for someone that is a first time or even considering themselves moving into intermediate area of, uh, of surfing. So let's go ahead and start over from the beginning real quick. I'm going to start off with one board we didn't include. If you're a true beginner and if you're going out for your first surf lesson, you're probably going to get something like this. This is a nine foot soft top long board. It's a long board with a soft top. Why is it soft? People are learning how to surf. You're gonna hit your head, you're gonna hit your body on it, and uh, it's not gonna hurt. So if you're just starting out, if you're very, very fir first surf session, you're probably gonna to wanna to get, well, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself on a soft board, a uh, soft long board, or a soft mid-range board in the 7.680 range. But definitely like a 9.0 soft top is a great first board to ride. Uh, after the soft top, I would then recommend one of those workhorse epoxy nine foot long boards. That'd be a hard board, epoxy, uh, durable, like we just showed you in the uh, nine foot or smaller range, depending on your size. And then as you start to progress, you're gonna wanna size down with your surfboard. And a great way to size down would be going from a nine foot board to an eight foot or a seven six board. That would be uh, uh, a good step. Once you're comfortable riding a mid seven foot range, uh, mini longboard, mini mal, uh, whatever you wanna call it, it's got a bunch of names, uh, then you're gonna make your next step. So like if, if if the waves are a little bit bigger, a little more challenging, and you start to accomplish that mid-range surfboard, you're going to start sizing down to a shortboard. And there's a million different types of shortboards. Uh, we'll start with just a thruster. So this right here, this is a thruster. It's set up with four fins right now. It could be set up with three fins. Um, they come in all sizes. 
There's another thruster right here. Depending on how tall you are, you see a lot of people riding these, the lineups, you're probably wondering what's up with that. Well, very thin, not a lot of volume. So the less volume on the surfboard, the easier it's gonna to be to maneuver. The harder it's gonna to be to paddle, the harder it's gonna to be to stand up, the harder it's gonna to be to keep your balance. But once you figure it out, the easier it is to turn, the easier it is to hit the lip, the easier it is to pull in and get barreled, make it out, all of those things. So shortboards come in a lot of shapes, a lot of sizes. These are your standard thrusters. Thruster usually refers to the three, here, hold up, to three fins. So if you look here at these fin plugs, got three fins there. That's usually when you see a three fin board, you can call it a thruster. You can also call a thruster a thruster with four fins and it has a general thruster shape, but that's what we're looking at. Um, and then there's lots of alternatives to a standard thruster in a shortboard. Um, let's look at maybe the old school, maybe that there. Let's pull up that single fin, because really, as surfboards have evolved, what was a longboard became a shorter longboard, and then eventually the first shortboards were being made, and this is how they look. This is your... This is actually my own personal 6.8 single fin. They call it a retro single fin. Um, during the shortboard revolution, when everyone was riding like really large, large surfboards, really long, really thick, and they started to cut them in half, literally. Um, this is based upon that type of style. As you can see, it has a little bit more rocker, and also it has this, has a single fin. Before the, I suppose, when the design progression went and moved into sort of like twin fins and uh, tri fins and you know quad fins and stuff like that, the single fin was pretty much the standard. Um, this type of board, I would usually ride at like a, a point break or somewhere that's pretty easy to paddle and get out because this thing is in the middle here is three inches thick. Okay, so I use this on sort of like more head high, overhead, double overhead days where I get be able to get into the wave a lot earlier. This allows me to to uh, to paddle a lot more, to be able to get to get more waves. But also at the back here, you see the board really thins out, and uh, you can then obviously ride it as a as a short board as such. Obviously not as in the same range as one of the boards that Joe just show, show us. But this definitely uh, is that kind of like in the middle. This was a transition from the longboard to the shortboard era. Let's be honest, there's not a lot of people riding single fin boards like that these days. No, as you can tell with my type of boards, I like a, a retro feel about my boards. This, this board here, you have to draw out your turns again. That is because of the, the actual single fin and the design of the tail. So you're not gonna be like smacking the lip or anything like that, but you're gonna do these long, big calves. You know, and then pretty much after the, the single fin, they started moving on to another direction and doing fin designs and stuff like that. Yeah, because what's better than one? Two. <laughs> this is a twin fin. This is a classic twin fin fish with glassed on fins. It even has, check this out, Marco Pacheco, a friend of ours here in Tamarindo, shapes as well, made me this board. It's got a fin rope here. It's where you put your leash. That's pretty old school. Um, so is the fact that these fins are glassed on. There's no taking the fins off to go on a, on a flight with this bad boy. It's all one surfboard. Um, there are more people riding twin fins than there are riding single fins these days. There's been a bit of a resurgence in fishes over the last 10, 15 years. Um, this twin fin, why do I like it? Why do I like twin fins? I, I'm not a real big thruster guy. I feel like a fin in the center of your surfboard, unless it's a longboard, it feels really stiff for me. Some people love thrusters, they love a three fin setup. I'm more of a quad or a twin fin setup person. Uh, when your fins are set up like a twin fin like this, or um, like, a, like a quad, the waves, like literally flows right through the middle of the board. You really feel more of a glide. It's kind of like mixes surfing with skating uh, or snowboarding a little bit. Um, the thing about a, a fish like this and why you might want to ride one um, is these keel fins are huge. And so you can actually surf a really, really big wave on this board and you can lean in on your turns and these fins are going to hold your board uh, in the wave really well. Um, it's, a really, it's a really fun style of surfing. It's not quite as snappy as, a, as a ripping on a thruster maybe, uh, a lot more glide, bigger carbs, bigger cutbacks. It kind of bridges maybe retro surfing with progressive surfing. But, you know, I think Nikki and I both are across the board. You know, we like longboarding, shortboarding, alternative shapes. And really, uh, you want to just pick the right board for the conditions and also how you feel that day. So when would you ride a single fin? When would you ride a twin fin? Like whenever you'd want.
I mean, it's going to be really hard if the surf is only a foot. You're pretty much limited to a longboard. But as the waves get up into that waist high, chest high range, you can ride a longboard, a fun shape, or a shortboard. You can ride a th thruster, a single fin, a twin fin, a quad, whatever you want. Um, and basically, it kind of just goes from there. The bigger the waves get, the less you're really going to probably want to ride a longboard because it's just a bigger board. It's more to deal with. Uh, it's harder to control. They go really fast. You got a really flat board, a lot of planing surface. So as the uh, <laughs> as the waves get bigger, it's uh, it's just harder to, to control. Really. Yeah, no, they definitely are. I mean, like uh, like we've said about all these boards, it does come down to general preference and how you're feeling. Um, so you know you can ride any of these boards in any of the conditions. You're going to have different rates of success depending on those conditions and the type of board that you're riding. Yeah, but, here's, um, here's another one. Yeah, another this one. Is, the, the, this again. This is the. What do you even call this? This is the kind of board I ride right groveler. now. Groveler. A groveler board. Yeah, yeah. These, these are the, this is what you this ride. Is you, this is, is the a groveler. That yeah, the sense. baked potato. Basically, um, the newest kind of sort of progressive design in, in surfboards are very short surfboards with a lot of volume packed into them. So you can go out on those smaller days with a smaller, more looser turning, more high performance board. You know, they're very, I don't know, stubby is the right word because the nose is really stubbed off and the tail is really wide and stubbed off. But like, you know, it's, a, it's really been like the biggest progression in surfboard design, I feel like in the last sort of like, I don't know, five years or something like that. Yeah, I think people, what they're realizing now is that volume is a very important metric. Uh, it's not about how long or short a surfboard is. This board may only be five and a half feet long, but it's got, what is this? It's a, oh, actually, no, this is a 5.3, but it has almost 33 liters. I'm riding a 5.9, and it's almost 40 liters. Mm -hmm. 5.7, it's 36 liters. So that's a, lot of, that's a lot of volume for such a small board. And with such a short, uh, such a short board, uh, your turning radius is very short. That means that you can be riding a waist-high wave and do a proper top-to-bottom turn on a tiny wave because you've got this very short board. It's just a little bit wider and a little bit thicker to make up for how short it is and gives you plenty of volume that you can actually catch waves with uh, longboarders sitting on the outside. You can catch waves when the surf's only waist-high. And I think that's probably a good uh, option. If the waves aren't so big and you don't want to ride a longboard, some of these groveler shapes are a great option for getting out there, still getting uh, your wave count up and being able to make a few turns. So, I don't know, I think we've kind of covered quite a bit. The answer, what is the best board to ride? It really depends on your level of surfing, the conditions of the, uh, the day, uh, where you're surfing, and how you feel. Mm -hmm. You know, some days you feel like longboarding, some days you feel like shortboarding, some days you feel like doing both. Yeah, and like we said before, the volume is really, really important because the volume is going to kind of really predict, not predict, but like it's going to help you to get more waves. Okay, a lot of surfing is a lot of paddling and not so much standing up. So the more waves you get, the more time you have to practice the, you know, practice on, uh, on surfing. So volume is extremely important and you can go online. There's a bunch of volume calculators for your body type, for the type of uh, waves you surf and um, and your level of surfing as well. So once you get that figured out, a lot of older shapers don't really c take volume into consideration. A lot of the more newer progressive shapers, volume is pretty much the key, what everyone is asking for. So that they, you know the type of volume you need, the type of wave that you surf, and then you can kind of look around and find that type of surfboard um, and say, you know, you can get uh, the same amount of volume in a shorter board as you can in one of those mid-range boards. You know, that is the, the beauty of, uh, I, so, I suppose, sort of like surf shapers right now. But um, so remember, volume is extremely important. Every single thing of the board has a, a different detail to it. You know, you've got the different type of fin setups. And uh, I would say, like we do, try as many different boards, fin setups uh, as you can. Yeah. And yeah. then see what feels good to you, which you'd enjoy to ride, which is, becomes more forgiving for you. What, you know, you know, you've always got to progress. You've always got to progress. So like, and uh, we're lucky here at the camp, we've got a whole bunch of boards for us to try out. So, you know, all the types of conditions, you know, um, yeah, de come check us out and try these boards. Yeah. Which is Rock Surf Camp at Tamarindo, Costa Rica. We've got over 300 surfboards in our quiver. Uh, you can surf every single one if you want. And we have everything from fat longboards to tiny shortboards to alternative shapes. We carry a lot of Robert August uh, surfboards that we shape right here on site. Uh, we work well with Firewire. We have a lot of Firewire boards. We're even making our own recycled uh, fun shapes, uh, softboards, and longboards out of recycled plastic. So. Definitely doing a lot with surfboards. I'm sure this just is the tip of the iceberg. So 
Any questions, please just write it in the comments and we'll answer you. Uh, if you can't make it here to Costa Rica to surf with us, just keep following us on YouTube. We're going to be putting more tutorials out. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and uh, go surfing every single day. Try a bunch of different boards and see what floats your boat. I think we should go for Seth. <laughs>